Hey guys, so as you may or may not know, depending on how closely you follow my channel, Gage and I were very successful in our IGP2 competition. The dog did very well. He got very good scores, mid to high 90s for everything. So now what we're doing is we're competing in regionals and regionals is in a week. So we'll be competing on June 9th and 10th, I believe. We've got to do a lot of preparation to get ready for regionals. The dog isn't quite where I want him yet. As you guys know, I wasn't particularly happy with the obedience, even though he scored well in the obedience. I know there's a lot more that he has to give in the obedience, and there's a lot more that I need to do to bring out more in the dog in the obedience. So what I'm doing right now is I'm really focusing on that, and I'm prepping hard for regionals. So we've got regionals in a week, and I want to walk away with 90s across the board. Not 90s, but like, you know, 90 to 100 across the board. I, don't, I won't be happy with anything less than that in all three phases, um, and that's my goal. You know, I'm, I'm aiming for the top. I'm not aiming for, for midway. I'm not happy to be there. I'm trying to be competitive here, and that's going to require a lot from both myself and the dog. So we're going to give it everything we've got, and we're going to see uh, where we end up this year. It's only been two weeks since our last trial. I don't like trialing so close. You know, I like my trials to be a little bit further apart because it gives you more time to kind of tear the dog down and then prep him back up again in terms of the training. But we're here and uh, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna give it all we've got and we're excited to get out there um, in, a, in a week and a half now for regionals. So today I'm just gonna focus on um, building the right mentality in the training, opening the dog. He knows how to do everything. Of course, he could do certain things better, but it's more about how he feels about everything. So I'm really gonna work on how he feels about everything and create the behavior that I want in that context. The way he does things is going to vastly improve if he feels the right way about those things. So it's not a happy feeling we're looking for. We're looking more for a frustrated, active, and aroused feeling. Because for this dog, that's really what brings out like the full power inside of him. So this is what we're gonna be after, fostering that emotion in the work and really marrying the two together, classically conditioning the obedience and that emotion. The more you do trial prep, sometimes you start to lose the emotion. So now it's time to kind of bring it back and get the dog up to a super active level. Let's go for a little heel. Get the dog feeling himself in the heel. Good boy. I'm trying to surprise him down. I know he knows the routine. He knows it backwards, forwards, but I'm trying to surprise him. I'm trying to make things shorter, longer. He should never be 100% what to expect. It's going to keep things interesting for him, Fruz. You know, every dog is different. Some dogs, they thrive on knowing everything that's coming next. Everything's super predictable, and they actually become more and more powerful through that. And some dogs, they need a little pepper in their life, you know? They need a little surprise from time to time. It keeps them just on the tippy tip of their toes. Now we're gonna set up for our motion exercises. This is where we really need to work a little bit here. Oof. Oof. Set. Set. Good boy. Good boy. I noticed when we were trialing. The dog would go flat in certain places. And I think it was just too many repetitions in training. And I'm deciding now to pair those key places, like the transition from the front to the heel with a ton of activity. Now it could bite me in the ass because obviously the dog could front and then start barking at me in the trial, which, you know, points. But hey, you know, if you don't want to fly close to the sun, you know, don't get out of bed in the morning as far as I'm concerned, like I'm going I'm going all out and we're gonna see what happens. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll bite me in the ass, you know? You guys can all watch that. So guys, as you know, the dog was injured last time leading up to trial and it was a close thing as to whether he would get better or not. So I have limited his jumping, but if I want a dog that doesn't touch the jump, I do need to jump him 
a little bit before this trial. So I am limiting it. I'm only going to do one jump. Whatever happens, happens. We're going to see. Okay. And um, that's it. So, boos. Sit. Spring. Sit. All right, guys, so that wraps up our obedience today. Um, I think you guys see kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to really open the dog in the obedience in different areas, um, you know, and really kind of give them a very positive emotion at very key transition points. Um, so we'll see how it works. You know, we'll see, we'll see how it translates. We don't have a lot of time. I would like a little more time with this, but hey, you know, so that's that's the only thing that's priceless in this life right is time well there's other things that are priceless too i guess but time is one of those things so anyways guys thanks for watching check out our online products this full power training shirt available on the website all our training all the gear that i use this um mcrs magnet ball gage Oof. this mcrs magnet ball that i love to use in my training available on the website um, the vest that I'm using, everything that we have, the hat, it's all there. If you guys are interested in our products, shieldk9.ca slash shop.